What's up guys, it's Preach, holler at you. Today we're going to take a book, we're going to sit down by the fire, we're going to get a little bit cozy and I'm going to do what my name suggests and I'm going to preach at you a little while. This is a continuation of our How to Play series. We already looked at clicking and now we can come, we stop being a clicker and get into key binding. Uh, so if you haven't checked that video, go and check, and check it. But today I'm going to talk to you about DPS. That's right, becoming a DPS monster. So if you're a healer or a tank, it's probably not going to be too useful for you, but if you're playing an alt, then I hope you uh, check it out anyway. So what about DPS? What is our job as a DPSer? Well, as the name suggests, what is DPS? Damage per second. We're there to do some damage. That's right, we're going to do some damage. So what are our important factors in this? Is it just to understand our class? No, it isn't. Understanding our class, which you can pick up from my guides or from playing your character in general, will give you a nice understanding of the abilities you should be pressing. Which spells do the damage? That's that's why I show you in my videos. Which spells do the damage? So we can get a decent amount of damage out of our class. But you will notice that some guys who are similarly geared to you do more. And that is annoying, isn't it, guys? That is so annoying. Is that you have some guy who's very similar to you. He always does more. How is he doing that? Is he, he can't have more fingers and toes than I've got. So what what's going on there? So I'm going to talk to you about some very little tips and tricks that you can do to make sure you maximize your DPS. First of all, let's look at the UI. Once you key binded, all this part of the UI, ooh, can't drag a box, all this part of the UI then becomes irrelevant. You're just watching for when things come back off cooldown. So this part of the UI becomes irrelevant. So we're now focusing on all this part of the screen. So we can now play our class without having to look down at our buttons because we're key binded and we're playing like a baller. So now we need to understand how we're going to do the most damage possible. So I want to take you take you to an imaginary world where what we're looking in front of us is these raiding trading dummies. And now these are going to be our raid boss. That's right, they're our raid boss. We're about to pull. Everyone's, there's a bit of sweat dripping from your brow. You're looking at the boss and you're thinking, I'm going to fuck you up, son. I'm going to mess your shit up. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, the pull. The pull, the big moment. This is the basis to start your big DPS. We need a decent pull. So we need to know about our class a little bit. And I'm going to do this from my main, which is my Death Knight. See, he's got a 387 item level. He's geared to the teeth. Why is the pull important? Well, we need to prepare for the pull. We need to have this feeling of what is going to happen. We need to run through the boss in our mind a little bit. And why do you think that's a bit stupid, is it? Because it's a game, after all. I've never understood people who play a game badly... And then say, hey, just play for fun, lol. There's nothing more fun, guys, than smashing everybody else in the teeth through your damage, or through your tanking, or through your healing. That's real fun. And that gives you a nice big sense of achievement. So let's run through the boss in our mind. How long does this boss last? How many times can I use my cooldowns? Is there a phase where the boss takes extra damage? Is there a phase where I can do diff uh, AoE, and I'm a good AoE class? Am I a good single target class? Is there a point where I can do really good single target DPS? Hmm. 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 All these questions should be running through your mind. These should be things you're asking yourself. Is there a point where I need to make sure I have a cooldown ready because it's important we kill it quickly? Is there an ad that comes that needs to die really, really fast? If that di ad doesn't die really fast, we have a high chance of wiping. And we don't like wiping. So I need to make sure I've got my cooldowns ready for that. These are questions you need to be asking yourself before we start. So, going off that basis, we've got a nice healthy boss. He's got plenty of HP. Uh, so we're going to be able to blow our cooldowns a couple of times. Especially if you've got one of those big three minute bad boys. Like, a, say, a combustion or something like that. Uh, we're going to have um, a, a nice opportunity to fire that off a couple of times. So then we start thinking about our pull. We're about ready to go. We're looking at that boss, we're eyeing him up, and we're thinking, you bad son of a bitch, you're about to taste my blade. So we're thinking about our pull. What's important at the pull? What's different at the pull than every other time in the fight, guys? What is different? Ask yourself that question now before I answer it. Something happens when we pull that will never happen again during the boss fight. Something really important to our DPS always happens. Can't think of it? Let me tell you. Everything that you have that has the ability to proc... And by proc, I mean that you do something like attack, or you cast, and it causes either a trinket, or a buff on your armor, or anything like that, to activate. That always happens. Always. And they all happen together. This is very, very important, guys. This is what I want you to really listen to. Is this only happens at the pull. 
very, very, very rarely will you have this opportunity again later in the fight to get absolutely everything off at the same time. And why do we want that to happen, Preach? Isn't it better to spread our buffs out so we always have some sort of DPS buff throughout the fight? Absolutely not. That is garbage. And whoever says that to you, you want to take a blade, run it through their stomach, and tell them, you idiot. Buffs gather on top of each other exponentially. So if more buffs we have at one time, we're going to start doing some serious, serious damage. So what buffs have we all got? Well, we're all probably going to get Bloodlust. Now, bloodlust is very important. 30% haste affects us all in different ways, but is almost generally a good thing. Okay, so we're going to get bloodlust at some point. When are we going to get bloodlust? Ask your raid leader. When's bloodlust on this fight? Uh, oh, well, we're going to do it towards the end of the fight. Okay, need to make sure I've got a cooldown up for when I've got bloodlust, because when I've got bloodlust up and I post my, pop my damage cooldowns, I'm going to do a ton more damage. I also need to be thinking about my potion. Potions are very, very cheap, guys. And if you're raiding, you should have potions. You really should. They're so cheap. Herbs cost nothing in Cataclysm. Go and get yourself some potions. Either Golem Blood, or the Tolvir potions, or the Intellect ones. Whatever your class needs, go and get that potion. You see, I pack about 68 on my main character. So, get your potions. Because then during Bloodlust, and a potion, that's already a nice buff. Because while you've got this haste buff, let's say you're a caster, you're casting 30% faster from Bloodlust. You've also got a big intellect buff from your potion. That's 30% more casts, while you're under the effects of a massive spell power increase. Already sounding pretty juicy, isn't it, guys? It's that big, juicy cake. How can we make that more juicy? Well, we can use our DPS cooldown while we're in there. Our controlled one that our class has. So now we've got Bloodlust and a potion and the DPS cooldown all stacking up together. So now we're firing 30% faster under the effects of a potion with a big DPS cooldown as well. That is pretty awesome. So then what else comes into it? Trinkets. Trinkets are a tricky thing, guys, and trinkets don't always play nicely. Especially considering, in general, it's considered better to have trinkets that proc. I'll show you two examples right here. My crushing weight, my melee attacks have a chance to grant 2,178 haste. So just by attacking, I have a chance to proc that trinket. My other one, my heart of rage, my melee attacks have a chance to grant 2,178 strength. So I have two trinkets which can activate just from melee attacks. I also have Rune of the Fallen Crusader. Let's bring it up. Let's see if we can find it really quickly. Oh, 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 Bridger, Forging. Fallen Crusader. Enchants your weapon. to. Uh, so sometimes has a chance to increase your total strength by 15%. Now, well, this is where it gets really, really good. And this is happens for all sorts of other classes. Don't get it wrong. Whether you've got Power Torrent or anything like that. Power Torrent has a big, fat spell power increase. So now we've got Trinket procs that can give us haste and strength. So we're attacking faster and we're attacking harder. So this is really good. We're firing off much money, many, many more attacks and we're hitting that much harder from strength. And then our rune goes off and that gives us 15% strength on top of the extra 2,000 strength we got from our Trinket and another 1,200 strength from our Potion. Holy shit, that is a ton of extra strength. That means we're going to be hitting all that much faster, all that much harder. And then we have Pillar of Frost as a Death Knight. Let's have a look at Pillar of Frost. Increases your strength by another 20%. Woo! I'm feeling it already. I'm feeling it in the trouser area. We have got strength coming out of our ass if we get all this stuff to proc up nicely. And this only happens at the pull, guys. Very, very rarely you're going to get the opportunity to have all these bad boys up at the same time. And almost definitely they're not going to happen during Bloodlust. So what else have we got to consider? We know about our class a little bit. So what do we know about our Death Knight? Scroll down. Merciless Combat. A 12% damage buff when our striking targets with less than 35% health. So let me put this situation to you guys and really blow your mind. Is we've got a boss. He's just gone below 35% health. Boom. We've got a 12% damage increase on our main abilities. We've then bloodlusted. So now we've got a 12% damage increase with 30% haste. We've then fired off our Pillar of Frost. We've got our Rune off, because our Rune generally fires off all the time. Our Fallen Crusaders. We've got 12% strength, plus 20% strength from that, and Trinkets up, and a Potion. That is some really big damage, and that is what makes, makes the difference. He's lining up all these buffs. This is where the difference is going to come on, because any idiot can spam Fireball, or can spam Wrath, or can spam Steady Shot, whatever it might be for your class. But really looking at your buffs, is very important because this is when you're going to start doing some crazy numbers. Some numbers that you'll just look at the damage you just hit and just go, Hoo -hoo -hoo! 
yeah, baby. That was the stuff right there. So, the pull, getting back all to it. The pull is when it's definitely going to happen. So, we're about to pull our boss. Even farm content, guys. We're going to do what's called pre-potting. We can only use a potion once during a fight while we're in combat. So what do we do to help that along? It's just before we're about to pull. Try and get your raid leader or your main tank to do a little countdown. We're going to wait till it's at one second and then we're boom. We're going to fire off our potion. So for the next 25 seconds or 24 as we get into combat, we've got this 1,200 strength. And let me show you what happens. And this is why UI becomes important because you watch my UI here. So this bit here is going to show me my bus. And this is what happens at a pull. So we're about to pull. We're ready. We're targeting. We're ready to go. We're going to go in. We're going to get ready. We're going to fire off our abilities. Boom. Trinket proc. Straight off. Boom. Runes proc. All good. Come on, Rage Heart. Don't let me down. And there's our Rage Heart. So, boom. We've got all our three buffs up. Then we fire off our... Look at all my buffs now, guys. I've got Blood Fury. I've got Haste. I've got Synapse Springs. I've got Pillar of Frost. Everything is buffed through the goddamn teeth. Okay, guys. Now, that happens. And you imagine then on top of that is a potion as well. Another 1,200 strength. Holy cow. Well, I do some damage for them 20 seconds there. I'm doing some serious, serious damage. Serial, guys. And you guys can all do this at the very beginning of your pull, no matter what your class is. All that crap is going to fire off. Everything your class has done, be it power torrents, be it weapon enchants, be it rings, be it trinkets, it's all going to happen at the very pull. So your first 30 seconds of your fight, guys, are the most important because this is going to set you up to continue your DPS later down the line. So we've done our pull. We fired off absolutely everything at once. Bish, bash, bosh. We have some super, super serious damage. Another cooldown I want to talk about is things like combustion. Combustion is an ability that we use whenever we have it up. And we want to make sure we use it as many times as possible in the fight. Because what we don't want to do, guys, is delay an ability and then lose the chance to use it again down the, down the road. That's a DPS loss. So if our boss is six minutes long, that's the possibility of three combustions there. So we need to make sure we use three combustions because we don't want to wait for that. You might have similar abilities on other classes, okay, guys? I'm just giving you an example of something that we fire off and then it goes on a long cooldown. When do we want to fire it off? Well, in general, we want to try and fire it off as soon as possible at the pull because we want to make sure that that spell gains the benefit of all our buffs. I'll just keep auto attacking it so you can see some buffs procking. So we want to make sure that our ability... So let's say I'm a, I've got combustion off cooldown. If I don't use it soon... I'm not really going to be able to get the full benefit. Oh shit, Trinket's just proc. Quick, fire it off. And you see the way I did that then? That's what I do in raids, guys. And that's why I have top world... I think I'm world 5th at the moment on Balrog 25 Heroic. All I do is I watch, boom, my Trinket's just proc. I need to fire off my Pillar of Frost now. And that puts everything on top of it again. That's what's important, guys. Is that you just watch this. This is why it's important to use a mod that tracks your buffs. And this is why I also have this extra bar down here. That shows my main DPS cooldown, which is Pillar of Frost. So I need to be just watching my screen. So I'm DPSing. I'm looking around. I'll just do you a quick example. So I'm DPSing as normal. Blah, 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 blah. Nothing special going on. No buffs up. I've got my room, but I haven't got Pillar of Frost rates. 22 seconds left. So I'm just going to keep chilling and chilling and chilling. And nothing special's going on. Nothing to worry about. But I'm thinking now, I've got 13 seconds left on Pillar of Frost. 10 seconds. Oh shit, I'm getting close to the time when I need to fire off my Pillar of Frost. So what do I do now? Six seconds left. Uh, I've got no procs up. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So you're thinking to yourself, I haven't got much longer left. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait a few more seconds to see if I get a proc off. If I don't get a proc, I'm just going to I'm just going to chill. All right, it's going to be. It's coming to the time now. Oh shit! Unholy strength. Boom! Fire everything off. There we go. Boom! 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 And that's what you do, guys. You just think about it in your mind. It's not worth blowing a cooldown every single second it's off cooldown if it doesn't gain a little bit of extra. But then you don't want to delay it too long where it's going to not be able to use used again during the fight, if you understand what I'm saying. The more times you use it, the better. So don't delay something for more than a few seconds. Try and have a general idea of how long this boss will die. And this is why after the fight, you want to sort of think, well, that was about a five-minute fight, so I can use it a couple of times. And then you can work it based on the boss health percentage. Well, the boss is at 50%, so I've probably got a couple more times to use my cooldown. If I use it in the next few seconds, I'm probably going to get it off again. So I'm going to delay it a few more seconds, a few more seconds, see if I get a power proc, see if I get a weapon proc, something like that, and then fire it off. Just those little delays, guys, are what's going to push your damage to the next level, if you understand what I'm saying. Don't wait 
for absolutely every buff in the world to be on you because it's just not going to happen. It's just going it, the chances of it happening, guys, are so bloody low. What you'll generally happen is you'll have one or two buffs at a time. As you can see, there we go. Rage Hat procs on its own. Well, that's no good because uh, I'm kind of waiting for all my procs to be up. Don't wait for the dream moment. It's just not going to happen. Just procs just don't work that way. They're just generally quite unreliable. It's better to just have an understanding of your character. Now Race of Death Press, but Rage Heart wore off. Oh, Christ, I was waiting until I got another proc. But now you've lost your strength bonus. So this is what I'm talking about, guys. You don't want to wait for absolutely ever for a buff to go off. It's just not worth it. As soon as you have some sort of benefit or a decent benefit from your buff, go ahead and fire off your cooldown. Get the bonus in there. And if you're really unlucky, that as soon as you fire it off, you'll get another buff. So there's my unholy strength. So I'm going to fire off Pillar of Frost. Boom, boom, boom. Get all my extra cooldowns. And that's how we get our exceptionally bonus DPS. You want to stack as many buffs as humanly possible. So that's during the fight. So we've done our pull. And we've done our during the fight ideas, okay? So we've done our pull. We're happy with that. Our cooldowns come back off. So now we've waited for some sort of proc. And now, now we've done our um, extra uh, cast off in the middle of the fight. Our extra DPS cooldown. That's been fired off. So now we're coming towards the end of the fight. Where we're going to get our third. Let's say I'm going I'm to use it from the example of someone who's got say a two minute cooldown. So it's coming towards the end of the fight. We're in our execute phase. We're now looking to fire off our last big cooldown. So what ideas are we thinking about there? Now, if we look at... We've taken a Fire Mage as an example. Fire Mage is also gaining extra damage buff with below 35% health. Okay. So we're below 35% health. We're in that damage range. Now, 35% is probably going to last a little while. So we've got some time to play with. As long as it happens before the boss dies, we're okay. We've also got our Potion back off cooldown. So now we've got at least our DPS cooldown and our Potion ready to rock and roll. And we're in our 35%. We're in a good spot. But 35% health, like I said, lasts a little while. So we're not in a great rush. We're going to wait for a little sweet spot to happen. Now that sweet spot is either going to come in the form of Bloodlust, which either tends to happen at the, middle, at the beginning of a fight or at the end of the fight. So we need to know when Bloodlust is coming and make sure we've got our cooldowns ready for that. So we've got our Bloodlust is about to happen. Awesome. So we're in a situation. We're DPSing away. Now I want to try and waste my cooldowns. So let's fire off Rage Heart and... Because that was just purely because I stopped attacking for a while. Both of those came off cooldown. So I'm waiting for them to go away. Go away, little prockies. Nine seconds left on that. So what is the best we can hope for in our 35% situation? Our best we can hope for, for our final big cooldown. Now, not all classes have an execute phase. I know that. What's the best we can hope for? The best you can probably hope for, guys, is one proc. Realistically, it's one proc. Unless that 35% phase lasts forever. Uh, not forever, but for a really long time. Uh, but then you need to be thinking also, is that a case of, I'm actually going to get to use it twice. Because the more times we use our cooldown, as we said, is the better. So we're in our 35%. Bloodlust's about to be fired. Bloodlust goes off. How do we react to that? Well, first of all, if we know Bloodlust is about to come, because we've got some communication going, we're going to make sure we're ready to cast and now we're going to simulate Bloodlust by going, Bloodlust! Are you ready? So, three, two, one. Bloodlust gone off. How do I react to that? Boom. I fire off my Pillar of Frost quickly, and I fire off a potion, so I've got all these buffs during Bloodlust. And I'm in this 35% phase, and that is where my big, big damage is coming from, okay, guys? And this is where I'm really going to tear it up. Fire off every cooldown, and luckily enough, we managed to get another proc off during that. Okay, guys? And that is the best you can hope for. It really is. You want to, you don't want to delay things waiting for this sweet spot. I want to get that into your head. Is that there's two ideas to maximizing your damage. Two important ideas. One is at the start of your fight, you're going to have every buff up you can imagine. That's when you want to fire off a cooldown. So get the fight underway and set yourself up for some big damage. Now, and you want to stack as many buffs as possible. The second idea is the dream... And the dream is that everything lines up nicely all the time is a dream. Is literally that. It's a dream, guys. And you don't want to be waiting for that. You want to maybe have one proc up extra, but not delaying it too long. So simple rules. One, know how long the boss is and work out how many times you can use your cooldown accordingly. Two, generally blow off your cooldown 
at the very beginning of the fight along with a pre-potion and that is when you're going to set yourself up with some huge damage at the very very get-go so really buff yourself up and set yourself up for some nice dps during the fight is bloodlust coming is a phase coming where i need to do something different which can buff my damage as a quick example if we're about to aoe a lot and as frost death knight i do great aoe I'm going to delay my cooldown a little bit just to make sure I have it during that AoE phase. So we can clear the mads off quickly. I can do a ton of AoE damage and get back on the boss. When's Bloodlust? If Bloodlust is coming in the next 10 seconds, I'm going to delay my cooldown until I have Bloodlust. And how long have I got other parts of my class that benefit me in damage, such as an Execute phase? If so, I'm going to make sure I have my cooldown for that Execute phase. And that's where you use general understandings. But using all these ideas, mixing them together and having just... It takes me less than 10 seconds to think about the boss, especially after I've done it a couple of times. I can do it. I can have a little think about the boss. I understand when I'm going to do it and ask questions. Say to the guys, well, when are we doing Bloodlust? Oh, we're going to do it at the pull. If you do it at the pull, that's awesome, guys. I mean, all we've lost it there is the 12% damage buff from, well, from my class. And you guys might not even have an execute phase. But what we do know about the pull is we're going to have every proc under the sun up. And that is going to be exceptional amounts of damage. And that's where we're going to start building up. Because once you've done 70, 80, you know, 80k damage at the very, very pull, let's do it in DPS terms. Let's imagine you're a decent geared character and you can pull off 40 to 50k DPS at the pull, like I can. Then that damage is there and it's done. And that is a nice big block of damage that's going to carry you all the way through. So if you have a weaker phase in the middle, it doesn't matter because you're buffed up by this big pull damage that you did. So I hope you get that understanding of how we do maximum dps and usually these ideas we've already looked at how to set up our class and now we know a little bit about how to really buff our damage up guys so go ahead and try it get on a training dummy and try it out and then go into a heroic and try it out okay guys that's all i'm asking you to do give these things an idea and that's how i do it that's how i pull off some top world rankings okay guys just following these simple basic ideas about how to maximize your cooldowns to make sure you get the most effect. And you want to stack up as many cooldowns as possible, all right, guys? That's it for today. Take it easy. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you understood a little bit about it. Ask me any questions you want, and I'll get back to you. All right, guys? Bye-bye.